Hello, and welcome to this special Files 1 News presentation, Building a Bridge, the New Tappan Zee. I'm Mike Gilliam. Over the next half hour, we'll explore the history of the span that links Westchester to Rockland and why it needs to be replaced, the behind-the-scenes battles, and the impact on the surrounding communities. According to the state agency overseeing the construction of the new bridge, the first discussions to replace the aging and obsolete bridge began back in 1999. And then, over the next 11 years, $88 million in taxpayer dollars was spent. 430 meetings were held. 150 concepts were considered, but the project did not move forward. Then, in 2011, new design-build legislation was finally enacted, and an environmental review was completed. We'll take an in-depth look at the state-of-the-art design of the bridge and how it compares with the current structure. Plus, we'll show you some of the new design aesthetics of the bridge. And we'll have a timeline of when the $3.9 billion project is expected to be completed and details on how much more traffic the new bridge will be able to handle. Plus, we'll hear from people living in the surrounding communities and how this construction will impact them and their concerns over noise, air, dust, and traffic. And we'll take a trip back in time when the first bridge was built. We begin now with our Carolyn Fortino, who met with the project leaders and has an overview of the massive undertaking. The Tappan Zee Bridge spans more than 16,000 feet from end to end, connecting Westchester County to Rockland County across the Hudson River. In 1955, the bridge first opened for traffic, handling about 18,000 commuter cars each day. But as travel greatly increased, the Tappan Zee Bridge started to deteriorate, leading to an 11-year discussion about repair and replacement. Kind of bogged down in red tape and government dysfunction. It was never able to get past the planning stage into something that was doable until Governor Cuomo in 2011 went to the federal government and said, look, we need to replace this bridge. More than 50 years later, the bridge's crumbling structure bears more travel than its design capacity, as 138,000 cars commute between Tarrytown and South Nyack each day. The federal government declared the Tappan Zee Bridge functionally obsolete, meaning that builders would not be approved to construct the same span today. In October of 2011, a design-build legislation was enacted, naming Tappan Zee constructors to synchronize the design and construction of the new bridge. Seven months later, three proposals for a new bridge were submitted, and two months later, a plan was selected. In January of 2013, the project was given notice to proceed, and in the fall, dredging and permanent pile installation began. The existing Tappan Zee Bridge is 87 feet wide. It only has seven 11 foot lanes and that little concrete movable barrier that switches twice a day. The new bridge, which is actually two spans, it's a twin span bridge, will be more than double the width. Here's an inside look at what the new New York bridge will look like. The new southern span from Rockland to Westchester County will be 87 feet wide, with four general traffic lanes, a shoulder dedicated to breakdowns and emergency vehicles, and an express bus lane. The new northern span will boast 96 feet and maintain almost the same layout, but will have the new shared use path for pedestrians and bicyclists. Included in the design are also six Belvederes that extend 12 feet beyond the path, providing a viewing area for people to take in views of the Hudson River Valley. Later this year, the, the people will start to see some concrete work going into the river. There'll be a concrete um, uh, foundations, pile caps we call them, that will be go on top of those uh, pilings that we've driven. And then you'll see columns and so forth starting later this year. The new Tappan Zee Bridge is being designed by Tappan Zee Constructors, a group of some of the world's best known and most highly regarded design teams and engineers. The group has hired hundreds of local subcontractors from Westchester, Rockland and Orange counties for jobs totaling $1.2 billion. But builders say the most important piece of the plan is the design build aspect, which enables construction to begin while other portions of the design are still being mapped out. And the guys can be out here and they start placing the permanent foundations while other design packages that may be, you know, lighting on the bridge, roadway, the different landings, there's aspects that don't have to be complete and we can still be out in the water placing foundation. And so as that moves along, 
we can shorten our schedule. President Barack Obama made his first trip to Westchester, visiting the Washington Irving Boat Club in Tarrytown. Using the Tappan Zee Bridge as his backdrop, Obama named the new New York Bridge as one of the country's top infrastructure priorities. He called upon Congress to sign the Grow America Act, which would speed up the process and provide additional funding for the new Tappan Zee Bridge. If they don't act by the end of the summer, federal funding for transportation projects will run out. Will run out. There will be no money. The cupboard will be bare. <laughs> and all told, nearly 700,000 jobs would be at risk over the next year. That's like the population of Tampa and St. Louis combined. But not everyone is thrilled about the plans for the new Tappan Zee Bridge. Soon construction will begin on the shared use path, which extends directly from the residential neighborhood of South Nyack. There's safety issues on the streets when you have cars parking and, and, high, and these little children running between them and cars actually driving up and down your streets looking for spots. It could create some uh, health um, safety risks and also the health risks from having the additional uh, carbon monoxide and soot in the area could, if, if a child, you know, can create asthma. 2015 and 2016 are the two biggest years for the Tappan Zee project, where residents will start to see the most progress. The piers will begin to grow up out of the water and the main towers will be erected and all construction will be completed in just over five years with the new New York Bridge opening to the public officially in July of 2018. In South Nyack, Carolyn Fortino, Fios One News. Now a big unanswered question is, will it cost more to cross the new Tappan Zee Bridge? The current cash toll is $5 round trip. Drivers with Easy Pass pay $4.25 and commuters with a monthly Easy Pass plan pay just $3. But once the twin span replacement is open, will tolls increase to pay for the project? In 2012, an aide to Governor Cuomo suggested that it might ultimately rise to $14. The governor distanced himself from the idea, saying at the end of the day, we have to make tolls affordable. He also said that leaders would appoint a special panel to discuss Tappan Zee toll increases and other ways to pay for the nearly $4 billion project. Still ahead on building a bridge, the new Tappan Zee. Bringing in the big guns, we'll tell you about the monster crane that will be used to help construct the new bridge. Plus, we'll meet one of the workers who tells us why his job is all in the family. And then, from Terrytown to South Nyack, the controversy surrounding a three-mile-long road for bikers and walkers. Plus, we'll tell you all about the scenic viewing locations on the new bridge and outline the safety measures being put in place to deter jumpers and prevent suicides. The first span of the new twin span bridge is scheduled to open in 2016 and the new bridge should be completed in 2018. It's been designed and constructed to last 100 years without major structural maintenance. Welcome back. GPS technology is now being used at the new bridge site on the Hudson. All construction vessels and barges are now equipped with tracking devices that allow boaters to use an online map to track their locations. They were installed in response to a troubling pattern of runaway barges from the site. Now, since September, barges have broken free three separate times. On March 30th, a Piermont resident spotted a barge with steel piles drifting down the river and alerted police. In January, two barges snapped from their moorings during a storm, with one traveling more than 10 miles down the river before it was recovered near Spite and Dival in the Bronx. After the last loose barge, the New York State Thruway Authority announced that it was withholding $1 million monthly to Tappan Zee constructors until the team improved site safety. Since then, a number of safety improvements have been put in place, including more training for workers, round-the-clock boat patrols, and upgraded mooring lines. The Coast Guard is also increasing safety measures. It has extended its regulated navigation area to 500 yards north and south of the bridge, where boaters must slow down. There are also plans to set up a safety zone around construction barges, an area that will be off-limits for recreational boaters. It's called the Left Coast Lifter, and its build is one of the world's largest floating cranes. The monster crane will be going to work on the new span. Now, here's some fun facts. The crane's boom is 328 feet, and the barge it sits on is 356 feet long. 
The crane can lift 1,900 tons or nearly 13 times the weight of the Statue of Liberty. The crane has been nicknamed the I Lift New York Super Crane. The crane comes to New York from San Francisco, making the 6,000-mile journey through the Panama Canal and then up the East Coast. The new bridge is bringing many new jobs to Westchester and Rockland counties. For one new hired hand, it's all about keeping it in the family. Files One's Ken Bufa explains. You may have heard how the new Tap and See Bridge project is creating nearly 40,000 jobs, or how in five years workers will bring home more than $3 billion in paychecks. But what you don't know is how the new bridge that connects Rockland County and Westchester County is also bridging the gap between generations. My father's first job was building the original bridge, um, and now, 60 years later, his son, myself, is working on the bridge again. 53-year-old Dan Doyle and his steel company Breakwell in Chester, New York, are among some of the businesses assigned to the new bridge. Doyle says that creating custom metal parts for the new structure could not have come at a better time. The last four years uh, has been tough. Doyle says businesses like his have been taking a beating from what he calls a sinking economy. You wonder, is this going to be your last month? Is this going to be your last month? But he says his business never sunk too low. Holding the hat of his now deceased father that he wore creating the old bridge, Doyle remembers some words of wisdom his father left behind. Uh, working hard. Um, don't give up. So when the Tappan Zee Bridge project was beginning to be discussed, Doyle's initial thought was... Just if, even if we get the, the crumbs off the job, for us, that's still that's a lot of crumbs and it'll feed us. As negotiations continued, business was not as busy as Breakwell. Doyle says it was not too bad, but not the way it once was, until everything changed. As soon as the Tappan Zee Bridge was ready to get built, Breakwell got to work. Welding. <laughs> cutting perfect time when we were really running low on work, all of a sudden this bridge started to ramp up again. And although Tappan Zee officials said the new bridge would bring new work, Doyle feels faith may have been in the blueprints. So, you know, there's a part of me that wants to think, you know, maybe there's more than coincidence there, almost like he's looking down and saying, here, I'm going to throw you this bone. In Chester, Ken Bufa, Fios One News. Nice story. There's still so much more ahead on this Files One News special presentation, Building a Bridge, the New Tap and Z. The plan and the construction are not without controversy. We'll hear from the people living near the construction site about their concerns. And then we'll take a trip back in time to when the original Tap and Z bridge was built. Stay with us. The village of South Nyack lies on the west bank of the Hudson River. And six decades after the original bridge was built and more than 100 homes were torn down to make way for it, the community is once again facing big changes. And it's not without controversy. File Swan's Lisa Salvati picks up the story. The jewel of the new Tappan Zee Bridge is the shared use path, a three-mile long lane on the bridge from Tarrytown to South Nyack, offering breathtaking river views for bikers and walkers. But where the state plans to end the path in South Nyack is at the center of controversy. It's going to be in our front yard. Tanya Wisner and her family live at this home on the corner of Cornelison and South Broadway. As it stands now, the state is buying a portion of her yard. She's losing her pool. The plan is to have the path run from the new bridge along the side of her house to the corner and end here. Wisner is not happy. Well, we'll, you know, be able to hand them coffee, I suppose. Drinks. <laughs> it's going to change our quality of life, definitely. This is an invitation to someone getting hurt, someone getting hit. Faith Elliott belongs to a grassroots group called the Tappan Zee Gateway Alliance. She says ending the path at this corner, across from the entrance ramp to the southbound throughway, is a disaster waiting to happen. The bikers would be competing with huge trucks, huge buses, speeding cars. It is not a safe place to cross. The group's founder, Cliff Weathers, agrees. We're talking about families, we're talking about people with young children crossing at a freeway entrance ramp where buses and trucks drive down all the time with no stop signs. The group wants the path's terminus moved to this piece of land by exit 10. But bridge officials are using it as a staging area for construction equipment and say it's not available. If the path does wind up in its proposed spot on Cornelison, parking for visitors starting their bike trip in South Nyack becomes an issue. The village has two-hour street parking. 
South Nyack Mayor Bonnie Christian says it's going to stay that way. In, in no way are we looking at parking on South Broadway. Back in March, there was a proposal at a village board meeting to knock down Village Hall, which is across the street from the proposed bike path, and build a parking lot. Once we heard that, you know, we, we tabled it. Uh, Village Hall is tabled. It's not an issue right now. The mayor of neighboring Nyack offered to host the parking in municipal lots a half a mile away. If that would help South Nyack keep the traffic off their streets and uh, keep the chaos to a minimum and allow it to retain its, its sleepy, wonderful, um, home-filled quality, then we're happy to help. One solution to the parking problem comes from the Thruway Authority. They want to turn this grassy piece of land, which is right by exit 10, into the new parking lot. The plan is still to have bikers exit on Cornelison and then cross the street to a newly constructed elevated ramp behind Village Hall. The ramp would extend over this jogging path and end in the new lot. Meantime, some bikers who didn't want to be on camera told me they don't care where the path begins or ends. They're just excited to ride across the river. But Mayor Christian says she cares. We really don't want it here. We really want it at Interchange 10. The mayor adds Cornelison is not a done deal and urges residents to share their ideas at upcoming village meetings. In South Nyack, Lisa Salvati, Fios One News. The bridge builders have installed environmental monitoring stations near both the Rockland and Westchester County shorelines. Now, these highly sophisticated machines are intended to monitor noise, vibration, and air quality. Construction noise is being monitored very closely to make sure the work is being done without exceeding allowable sound levels. The environment below the waters of the Hudson is also being monitored. One species in particular, the short-nosed sturgeon. The Thruway Authority is tagging 120 of them and will be tracking their movements, which can provide clues about the effects of the construction. The short-nosed sturgeon and its larger cousin, the Atlantic sturgeon, are on the endangered species list. The Hudson has been home to both species for centuries. Short-nosed sturgeon spend their whole life in the Hudson, while Atlantic sturgeon are born there and return to spawn. Still to come, the designers of the new bridge have gone to great lengths to build safety features to prevent people from jumping. We'll tell you all about that. And then a trip down memory lane, how the original Tappan Zee Bridge was celebrated when it opened for the first time. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The new twin spans over the Hudson will have scenic viewing locations along the shared use path. It will also have protection incorporated into the design that will deter people from jumping. Our Famie Redwood tells us more. I noticed that there was two people, an older couple, that was actually holding this one kid who was actually dangling on the other side of the bridge. Meet Kristen now, Arfio, exactly one of the Good Samaritans who stopped but... a 20-year-old from jumping off the Tappan Zee Bridge in April. It was a good feeling. From 1998 to 2008, more than 25 people committed suicide on the bridge, according to the New York State Thruway Authority. After a bridges, series of reports by RNN's Richard French, four suicide prevention hotline phones were installed on the bridge, two each on the Rockland and Westchester sides. WRNN played an important role in highlighting this issue. The new design will include suicide deterrent barriers, a safety netting that's mesh that'll basically catch anyone who tries to jump, and an angled fence along all four edges of the bridge. So it makes it even harder to climb up. You, your weight will literally pull you back. The new Tappan Zee will have a shared use path for bikers and walkers, and for the first time, anyone will be able to enjoy the breathtaking Hudson River views. You'll be able to enjoy those views at six scenic overlooks. Underneath the overlooks will be the steel mesh safety netting. Connie Bear says these deterrents are proven to work. We went up to Cornell University where they're using this type of uh, steel mesh safety netting and where they're using some uh, innovative fence designs because they've had an issue uh, with all the gorges up at Cornell. Let's not forget about terrorism. Engineers also had that in mind. Now there's going to be a 24-7 high-tech video monitoring system that'll see all angles of the bridge. We'll see it, we'll know it instantly and can respond instantly. In Tarrytown, Famie Redwood, Fios One News. And we'll be right back with a blast from the past. We went digging in the New York State archives and found the original reporting on the opening of the newly built Tappan Zee. We'll share that with you when we return.
welcome back. Construction started on the Tappan Zee Bridge in March of 1952, and the bridge opened to traffic on December 15, 1955, along with a 27-mile-long section of the New York State Thruway from Suffren to Yonkers. Now, we found a promotional film from the New York State Thruway Authority, which celebrates the bridge opening. Take a look. Your New York State Thruway, superhighway and main street of the Great Empire State, is extended another 28 miles from Suffren to Lower Yonkers. Motorists and truckers now have 424 miles of this longest of all expressways. This ties the New York metropolitan area with upstate New York and provides connections with expressways in neighboring states. The most spectacular project on the thruway is the three-mile bridge spanning the historic Tappan Zee section of the Hudson River between Terrytown and Nyack. This is the largest bridge of its type in the world. First test borings for this $60 million structure were sunk in mid-1951. Actual construction work started in March of 1952. Vast quantities of steel and concrete soon formed the foundation. There are more than 153,000 cubic yards of concrete, 14,000 tons of reinforcing steel, and almost 60,000 tons of structural steel in the bridge. It has over 27 acres of pavement spread over six wide lanes, three in each direction. Most unique feature of the bridge is the use of huge underwater boxes, eight in number, which rest on the river bottom at mid-channel and serve as buoyant foundations to support about 70% of the bridge's dead weight. These concrete boxes, the largest, half the size of a big city block, were built here in a natural dry basin 10 miles north of the bridge. The basin then was flooded. Tugboats hauled the boxes into the Hudson River and towed them to the bridge site. The first caisson was moved downriver in October of 1953. Back at the bridge site, each of the boxes was carefully jockeyed into a corral, filled with water, and sunk to its precise river bottom location. As the weight of the foundations and superstructure was added, the boxes were pumped dry for the desired buoyancy to support the bridge. Part of the vast construction process involved the placing of 19 of these huge deck truss spans. These also were fabricated 10 miles north of the bridge and floated into place atop their concrete foundation. This steel girder made history last September when it was lifted from a river barge to form the final steel link in the main channel span. Your Thruway Bridge is now formally opened with another 25 miles of the longest, safest, best engineered superhighway in the world. Another historic chapter to the rich heritage of New York State and its cross-state Thruway. In 1994, the name of Malcolm Wilson was added to the bridge's name upon the 20th anniversary of his leaving the governor's office, though it's almost never used when the bridge is spoken about. That's it for us. I'm Mike Gilliam. For everyone here at Files 1 News, we thank you for joining us. Goodbye.